Hello, how are you? Um, as he was saying, I'm speaking about a token walks into a spa. It's not really like, a, it doesn't say much, the name, but the name that I actually wanted to put is this one. Learn how to create a small app with Angular 2 that contains authentication, multiple pages, and APIs to call a server. If I would have sent this title, this, pro this talk probably wouldn't have gotten accepted. So instead, this looks better, right? But this is what we're going to learn. So before starting, let me introduce myself. My name is Martin Gontavnikas, but everybody knows me by my Twitter handle, which is mgonto. If you want to follow me and increase my ego, it would be awesome. So I am a software developer from Buenos Aires, Argentina. You might notice from my accent that I'm not from here. And I work at a company that is called Auth0. Auth0 is basically a SaaS that helps you with authentication and authorization. So if you want to add authentication to your application uh, for like AngularJS, Ionic, we have support for Firebase, you can just hook it to your app or API. If you have questions, you can ask me later on. So I used to be there actually coding JavaScript all day long. So this was basically me. It was <laughs> But not anymore. Now I'm a developer advocate. So people ask me, what does it mean to be a developer advocate? And this was me when I was 17 years old. I was in a karaoke singing with a microphone like this or something like that. I'm kind of doing the same, but instead of singing very, pa very bad and very poorly, I'm now speaking about technology around different places. And in order to speak, of course, you still have to code. So let's start with the talk. I know it's late. I know everybody's tired. So let's start. This is how you would look like. It's like, oh, it's ending. It's like so tired. So I wanted to put like flashy lights so that everybody wakes up. So you can see the flashy lights for like five seconds, and maybe you wake up. And also, I was planning on doing t-shirt time. So if you have seen Shai Resnick's talk at NGConf, throwing t-shirts is his idea. If you haven't seen it, it's my idea, of course. <laughs> so let's try it out. Let's see if I can do it. I will have more because my throwing skills are not good. <laughs> oh, I'm so good. <laughs> Let me try one more. Maybe like smaller sizes fly further away. I don't know. I should have done like stats on this or something like that. I don't know. Well, it was better. I have more t-shirts. So if somebody wants some t-shirts after the talk, I brought like 40. So it should be enough. So now more flashy lights, because that's what we need to wake up. But now let's really start with the talk. So how does the web work right now? So most of the web is still like regular web apps. And what we have is basically a browser and a server. So whenever I actually want to do something, like for example, I bought this new MacBook that I just remember that I have to connect it because I don't have that much battery. So I will steal the plug from here. OK, it's charging. That's good. So now, continuing, we have the browser and the server. So when I'm using, I'm, I'm, I'm for example, wanting to buy this computer. So what I do is I basically sit and try to log in. So I put my username, and I put my password, and just send it to the server. It will basically do a post. Then the server will grab the username and password, will connect to the database, Postgres, or whatever it is. It will check that the user exists, that the password match. And if it, everything works, it will create an object in the session for that user. So what is a session? A session is basically an in-memory store where we will store all the users that are logged in in a particular moment. So that's all it's going to do. And each of these users that is in the session will actually have an ID. And that ID will be sent to the browser in a form of a cookie in the response. So I'm sending this to the browser. Cookies work automatically in the browser. So basically, this cookie will get saved by the browser. And then for the now, that's it. Next, I click on Buy. When I click on Buy, I'm still on Apple.com. So the browser is intelligent enough to say, hey, I got a cookie from Apple.com when he was logging in. So now he's trying to buy something. Let's send the same cookie. So we will automatically send this cookie back to the server when I'm clicking on buy and doing this buy request. 
then the server will basically grab the, the cookie, it will grab the user ID from inside the cookie, and based on that user ID, it will search in the session, in the in-memory session for the user to see if he's already logged in, and if he is, it will say, okay, user is fine, let's go to the database, and let's grab the user information from the database, and let's take his money, because he's buying a computer. Once it takes my money, it returns a response. And this is how most of the web works right now. And the thing is that this used to work really well in the past. For our regular web apps, it used to work really, really well. But the problem is that it doesn't work well in the world that we are right now. If we are here, it's because we are using Angular, probably. And if you're using Angular, it means that we are creating single page apps or mobile apps, and we're creating APIs. And the world has changed a lot since the time that cookies were created and since the time that cookies started to exist. So what are the problems that cookies have? So cookies don't play well with cores. Hands up, who has used cookies with cores here? OK. So if you have used cookies with cores when authenticating someone, you probably landed in the same Stack Overflow question than me, because everybody Googles about it. And the problem is that if you're using cookies and doing cores, it doesn't work well. So what is cores? I usually have my single page app deployed on foo.com, and then I have my API on bar.com. In order for my single page app to do a request to bar.com, I need to be able to say, OK, I'm doing a request from foo.com to bar.com. And for that, I need to specify some headers, the options method. And if I'm using cookies, I even have to specify more stuff. So cookies doesn't get along well with this course thing. The other thing is that cookies usually require stateful servers. So I was, I was saying that once you log in, we have this, in, this session, which is an in-memory store for users. So this in-memory store for users is adding state to HTTP. And HTTP is a stateless protocol. What does it mean to be stateless and state? And stateful, sorry. Stateless means that given a certain request, it will always return the same response. So there's like no side effect, nothing that will change, and it's much easier to test. If it, if it has stateful, it means that given a certain request, the outcome will, will change depending on that state. And if I do a request with some cookie, Depending on the server, depending if the server has that user logged in or not in this in-memory session, the response will change. That makes debugging this much, much, much harder. And also another problem that this brings is like, imagine you have three different servers. So now I log in to server number one. Server number one creates the user in the session in it and then returns the response. And then when I click on buy, it goes to server number three. Server number three will check in its in memory session store if it exists. And if the user doesn't exist there, it will say, no, the user is not logged in. You cannot buy it. So most, most people what do to fix it is you have like a centralized store, which could be like a Redis or a MongoDB or something like that, where you have a, there save the session for everything. Or you're using something that is called sticky sessions, which means that once the session was created, all the requests will go there. But those solutions are to fix a problem that shouldn't be there, which is adding state to something that should be stateless. And that's why APIs should be stateless. I mean, if you have used Facebook API, Twitter API, Google API, or any API, you will see that all of them are stateless. Because if it's stateless, it means that it's really easy to test, because given a request, the response is always the same. It's really easy to debug, and it's really easy to find problems. And it's really easy to have less problems as well. And the other thing is that cookies don't flow. So what does it mean? Lately, we're having more and more and more servers. So now, I might have a single page app that calls the server number one, and then I need to call from server number one to the server number two. So that means that my authenticated request from the single page app needs to go through the server number one to the server number two. If I'm doing that, using cookies is a pain in the ass. It's like really, really hard because the cookies authorization mechanism doesn't flow. It works well with Chrome because, or with any browser because it's integrated with that browser, the behavior. 
But if we're using an, H an, an, an HTTP API client in our server one, sending cookies there is much harder than doing another thing. So what I want to propose to you is a better approach, which is token-based authentication, specifically using JSON Web Tokens. So for this, let me show you what a JSON Web Token is. So if we go to jwt.io, and if internet works, ah, I'm doing ads for Hyatt now. <laughs> so now, let me zoom a little bit. So this is a JSON Web Token, this on the left. So the JSON Web Token is similarly to any other token that already exists. It, it, I mean, if you see it, you say, yeah, it's like random numbers. But the nice thing about JSON Web Tokens is that that's not true. They are not random numbers. What you see on the right is exactly what is on the left. So this part of, uh, in blue here in the right is called the payload. In the payload, I can put whatever I want. I usually would put here the user information, like user ID or username, or whatever information I need to get from the user. Also, if I write something here, like if I change Sean Doe to Martin Gonto, who's me, you will see that the token keeps on changing. And that proves that the token is based on the content that is on the payload. So why is it not the same? Because this blue part is actually a base64 URL encoded version of the payload in here. Then we have this green part. This green part is part of the spec. JSON Web Token is an IETF specification that just became final like two months ago or something like that. And people are now starting to use it. For example, Firebase that they did a talk before, they are using JSON Web Tokens. And there are another companies starting to use JSON Web Tokens now. Part of this spec says that the header needs to specify first the type, which is JSON Web Token, and then an algorithm. This algorithm will be used to sign this JSON Web Token so that I know that the one who created this token can only verify this token again. So what does it mean? That, that this means that I'm getting the header first. I'm doing a base64 URL encoded of that. I'm showing that with a period with a payload, base64 URL encoded. And then I'm running this HMAC 256 algorithm on all of this with a particular secret. Let's say that my secret is like um, Angular. So let's write it again. And now I have this token signed with Angular. And it says signature verified. So now let's refresh the page. Wow. Wi-Fi is not liking me. Yeah, maybe I can do shocks. OK, it loaded. So now if I paste the token here, you will see that it has the exact same payload that I had before, because you can see it but it's saying invalid signature. And that's because it's trying to validate that this token was created with the secret secret. And that's not true. That's why it's not working. And this is what we can use in our servers to verify it. We'll see a little bit more about it in a second. But if I write here Angular, now it says signature verified. Because this token was created with this Angular secret. So now that we understand what a JSON Web Token is, Let's do this same approach of buying a computer with a JSON Web Token. And let's see how it works. So again, I'm sitting here, and I want to buy a Mac. So the first thing I do is I log in. So I send my username and password to the server. The server will now again go to the database, check that the username exists, check that the password match, blah, 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 blah. But now, instead of actually creating a user object in the session, it is just going to create a JSON Web Token. So it's going to get the user information, and in the payload, it will put the user ID, username, user last name, and all of that information. And then it will just return that JSON Web Token to the browser. So this means that the server is not saving anything at all in there. It's not saving anything at all in memory. It's just creating this token and sending it to the browser. Now, the browser will save it in local storage. And when the user clicks on buy, it has to send this token again. So what it will do is it will send the JSON Web Token in the authorization header of the request. It will say authorization, better, and the token. Now, the server will check first that this token 
was created by it. How does it do it? Because this JSON web token was created with a particular secret that only this server knows. So you will check that this, this JSON web token was created with a secret that this server knows. If that's true, it will grab the payload, and it will already have the user information in there, and then just go get the user, take the money, and return a response. But the nice thing about it is, is that given a particular request, if it has a JSON web token, any of the five servers, six servers, 10 servers can actually check if the user is logged in correctly. I don't have, I don't need a central storage for these five servers to communicate. I don't need any, any particular way of synchronizing because this is stateless. Because the request has absolutely all the information that you need to log the user in. So, sorry, it's not working very good. So at first, when I, when, when I saw it, it was like, yeah, that's cool, but it's like not, not really that easy to understand it at first. So I'll basically do t-shirt time, because why not? <laughs> i try one more time. I got a little bit better last time. Let's try. I don't see nothing there, but. <laughs> this one was better. I'm, I'm getting better. I should practice more. And basically, the idea is that now I will stop talking, and I will do a live demo of how you can bring your current Angular 2 application and actually implement this on it. So let's see it in action with Angular 2. Before actually doing it, I want to give you a warning, which is that Angular 2, I'm using the alpha 26. And when something has the word alpha, it means that something like this can happen, or something like this can happen as well. And if it is, I want you to pay attention and correct my mistakes, because I have a, a disability, which is that I'm, type of, I'm, I'm really type of friendly. I'm very good with typos. I always have them. So for me, sign up is like sing up. I don't know why. Maybe I want to sing. I don't know. So well, let's try it out. So let's actually kill this server, and let's start this server. First, let me show you what the app looks like right now. So this is the application. It, does it see, or I'll increase the? This is the application. Very nice UI, bootstrap. So it's saying, welcome to the Angular 2 authentication example. And it has three buttons, call anonymous API, call secure API, and logout. So I need to start the server. Now, if I click on call anonymous API, every time that I click it, I will actually get a random Chuck Norris phrase. But I can only get 50 Chuck Norris phrase, because if I want the 50 others, I need to do a secured request. So now if I click on call secure API, it says an authorized error. No authorization header was found. And since we want 100 Chuck Norris phrases, because 50 is not enough, we're actually going to implement it. So to start with it, we're going to start with a login. So let me actually show you the app. So this is the application. Let me increase the font size. 24? Is it OK, the size, or a little bit bigger? Bigger? OK. 28? I like even numbers. Does it look better now? OK. So this is the application that I have right now. Um, it's all TypeScript. And in this case, I just have this home, which is what you're seeing actually in here. Let me. It's, it's here in the URL, it says home. You don't read it, but trust me, it says home. And that's all we have right now. And then we also have the home component, which is in here, and the home component for now just does these calls to the API. So now what we're going we're gonna to create this login component. The only thing that we already have is first the HTML, because I'm like so bad with HTML that even the bootstrap thing, I had to copy and paste it. So this HTML has the username and a password and a button. So we want to do the first step, which is logging the user in and getting a JSON web token in return. So for that, let's actually create this component. So as any good developer, let's copy and paste from the other one, because that's the easier way to start. And let's actually come here to the login. Uh, so we are first importing the styles. In this case, it's 
login.css, login.html. The selector will be login. And in this case, we're not using any directives. And then we're going to export, export this login class. And for now, that's it. Let's actually add it a constructor. And what we want to do now is we want to log the user in. So in order to do that, we need to handle the submits of this form. So let's go to the login HTML. And the first thing we need to do is we need to get the username and password values. For that, we can use the hash from Angular 2. And if I put a hash here, that means that then I can reference to this input type text by saying username. And I'll do the same for the password. Then what I need to do is I need to handle the submit of the form. In order to handle events in Angular 2, what you need to do is just add parentheses on the event that you want to handle. So in this case, I'm saying I'm going to handle the submit. I will call the login, the login method, say, sending the event. It will send the username value and the password value. So now it will, send this, it will call this login when I click on login. So let's actually come to the login.typescript and implement this method. So we have the login, we will we'll receive event, username, and password. And now first, it's the event.prevent default because I don't want to submit the form. And then we're going to use fetch to call our API. So let's do window.fetch. And we're going to call the API, which is HTTP localhost 3001 slash session slash create. This endpoint will receive the username and password. It will check in the database, which is an array in memory, of course, if the user can log in or not. And if it can, it will return to me a JSON web token. This will be a post. So let's say that it will be a post. And then we need to say that this will be a JSON. So we're going to accept application JSON. And we're going to do the same with a content type. It will be application JSON. And then our body, in this case, will be the username and password. So the body would be the JSON.stringify of the body and, sorry, of the username and password parameters that I'm getting here. So this will actually return a promise to me. And I have a few helpers that will use. The third one is called status, which if I get a status, HTTP status that is not 200, will actually call the catch from the promise. Then I have another helper, which is called JSON. And it parses the JSON, that's it. And now I can actually get the response. So I get the response. And in case of error, because you know that might happen with live coding, let's actually get the error. And in here, we'll say, if there's an error, let's log it. And let's alert it. And now, if I get a response, what I want to do is I want to save the JSON web token that I get in local storage. So let's actually do local storage dot set item JWT, and it will be response dot ID token. And then once the user logs in, I want to send the user to the home. So if I want to send him to the home, I need to inject the router. For that, I will say that I will get a router, which is of type router. This public keyword will save it as an instance variable. And now all I need to do is this.router.parent.navigate, and we're going to the home. Now the login component is finished. Let's actually create the root for it. So if we go to the app, we'll again do something that I'm very good at, which is copy paste. Let's say that the login will go to the login, and it will be login. Let's actually import it. So again, copy, paste. It will be the login component, and it will come from login. And I think that's it. Let's open the console, because I don't have that much face. So let's go to the login page. If I put login here, something shows up. So it's the first step. Now let's try it out. Let's put a username and password, which actually doesn't exist. So ASCF, ASCF, and I'm getting the username and password don't match. That's what this says, which is good because they don't match. And the user that I have already created here is Gonto Gonto. So if I click on Submit now, I logged in. However, do I see something that the user is logged in? 
I don't see anything. But if I come here to resources, local storage, now I have this JWT in here, which is safe. So now, if I click on the call secure API, hands up who thinks it will work. Good. It won't work. Because I need to actually send this JSON web token that the user is logged in. So let's first show it up. So we come to the home, and now we can get the JSON web token uh, from local storage. So let's get the item. Let's refresh the page. And boom, now it's showing it. And now let's actually decode it. Let's, there's a node library that is called JWT decode, which I already imported, which lets you decode a JSON web token. So let's create here the field decoded JWT, which will be a string. And then let's actually say if there is a JSON, if decoded, if there is a JWT, then let's decode it. So window.jwt decode, and it will be this.jwt. Now we can show it in the HTML. So again, copy paste, blah, blah, blah. And in here we're saying decoded JWT pipe JSON. We're using a pipe which will show the JSON content of it. So if I re refresh, now I get the JSON web token. And in this case, it's username Gonto. It has EAT, which is the issued at date, and the expiration, which is also part of the spec. And we can have a JSON web token uh, expire. We're showing it. We're not sending it. So let's send it. Now, if we come to the fetch in here, we can add a new header, which will be authorization. And this just have to send better plus this.jwt. Refresh. Now we call secure API, and we get 50 more phrases of Jack Norris. But now the user is logged in. So now something that we, want, we might want to do is logging the user out. What does it mean to log the user out? In a single page app, I don't have a session. I don't have anything like that. So logging the user out is just deleting the JSON web token from local storage. Because if the user doesn't have the JSON web token in local storage, it cannot call a secure API. If it cannot call a secure API, then he's logged out. So let's implement this logout like that. So if I come here, I see this button logout. Again, let's do this. The, let's handle the click event, and we'll say logout. So now we go to the home. Let's create this logout method. And let's say that the only thing it will do is it will just remove the item, JWT, and then it will redirect the user to the login page. Let's see if this works. We click on logout now and we're getting to login page. However, if I change here the URL and I go to home, I still can see the home. And if I'm, if, if I'm making a website, I don't want the user to be able to see pages that he's not allowed to do. We want to redirect him to a login page. That used to be like really, really easy in a regular, in a regular web app because we had sessions. But in here, there's no session. There's no concept of being logged in. Because being logged in, means having state. In this case, I don't have state. Since I don't have state, the user isn't logged in or not. I just have a JSON web token, or I don't. So what I can do is I can actually implement and extend the, the router and make it so that if the router is going to a URL that is not logged in and it doesn't have the JSON web token, just redirect him to the login. However, if he actually wants to see this page, he will be able to. So let's actually code that. So I have it here, this login outlet, which I already created it. Sorry, not live coding for everything, because live coding this contract constructor would require too much memory. I'm not good with these types. So, but what is the router outlet? The router outlet is what, is what will let the router know where to display the content of the page. And it has a method that is called activate. This activate will say, can the user log in, or sorry, can we show this page or not? So what we're doing is we're, we're actually overriding this. We're getting the instruction. And what we want to do here is first get the URL. So let's get the URL. Never use var. Let's get the URL, which is this dot 
parent router does last navigation attempt. And then once I have the URL, what I want to check is if the user is going to some page that is not logging, so it's not logging, and he doesn't have uh, a JWT, then I want to redirect him. So if he doesn't have a JWT, I want to tell the instruction to go to the login. Component equals login. And now we can call super with the instruction. So we've implemented our new router outlets. So now all we need to do is actually import it here and change the current router outlet for the new one that we have created. So now we can do import uh, logged in outlet from, yeah, I'm not trying to write it. So we're copying it and we're going to this, this one. And then now we're just changing this router outlet, this directory that we're using for this other one. And now if everything works well, which I guess it's not. What? Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a good point. Thanks. You had a t-shirt. <laughs> I almost got without any syntax error. So now if I try to go to the home, I get redirected to the login. But now if I log in, and then now I go to the login, and I go back to the home, now everything is working. Because this, this router outlet is checking if there is a JSON web token or not. Last thing that I want to show you is, so the, the JSON web token is actually can be seen, and it's in here in the web. So why not modifying it? So let's actually get it from here. Let's copy and paste it into JSON web token. And now we can actually edit it. That's what I would think. So instead of username Gonto, we are malicious. So it will be user uh, malicious. And now I have this. So let's copy this new JSON web token and change it in the local storage directly. Now if I refresh the page, you will see that now it says malicious because it has the new JSON web token. Now hands up, who thinks it will work if I, call, if I click call secure API? Good, because it won't. Because the thing is that in this case, I just created this JSON web token with the secret Angular. And hopefully, I don't remember, the server doesn't have that same secret Angular. So now if I click on call secure API, it is saying invalid signature. And that's because this JSON web token was created by me by hand to alter it. And the server says, no, you're trying to kid me. So I'm not going to let you do that. So I think that's it for the demo. So I, let's continue with the presentation. Sir. Wow. So if you want to get to the, if, if you want to get the source code for this example that I've just shown, if you want to get the slides uh, that I'm showing right now, and I have uh, links to two more videos, two blog posts, and some more stuff, you can just take a picture to the screen. If you go to this URL, you will be able to see all the resources. I leave it for like 10 seconds so that you can take pictures. Maybe I can say jokes or something. I'm not good with jokes. But I, will, I, can, I can dance <laughs> or something like that. So anyway, this is the link. Um, so that's actually it. So thank you. <laughs>